So hello to everyone and welcome to Brooklyn Friends. Uh, my time here uh, started in 1973, a long time ago, uh, when I was a newly discharged conscientious objector from uh, the U.S. Army and uh, finishing a doctorate in political science at Columbia University. In all of those years since 1973, we've seen wars in Vietnam and Iraq and Afghanistan. We've seen major uh, economic recessions. Uh, we've seen 9-11 just uh, a mile or two from here. Uh, but I don't think that there's ever really been a moment like the present when so our governmental leadership seems to be to undercutting the values that we share of nonviolent conflict resolution, of recognizing that unique divinity within each one of us as individuals, of striving for equity and social justice, to create a sustainable living environment for the billions of people with whom we share this planet. Each one of those values is under attack by a leadership that seems to be dedicated to intimidating, scaring, dividing, I hope this doesn't seem to be too all depressing and opening, <laughs> but it's a challenge we all face, and we can face it with joy, we can face it with courage. We can face it with solidarity, and we can face it together. So welcome to Brooklyn. Welcome to the BFS E-News Podcast. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. You just heard from Dr. Larry Weiss giving the opening welcoming statement at this year's Quaker Youth Leadership Conference, which was hosted here at Brooklyn Friends School and with Mary McDowell Friends School. But you'll also hear today from students that were involved in the planning and attending the conference. You will also hear from Marna Harity the point person here at Brooklyn Friends School for the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. All the images today are from the conference itself. The Quaker Youth Leadership Conference has been around for about 20 years, and it's a conference for high school students attending Friends Schools worldwide. And each first week in February, delegations of six students and a couple of faculty or staff come from schools and gather together and we learn from another, celebrate with one another, worship with one another, and really just have a good time. So now let's hear from some student reflections about how the event went. And this is brought to you by Paul Romano. I'm here with Tyler and Val, and I'm interviewing them about the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. So what were your roles at the conference? Maybe you first, Tyler. Um, Val and I were both uh, student organizers, and we I facilitated a workshop on colorism, and we also helped groups navigate New York City on our service trips. Yeah, um, I also facilitated a workshop on animal rights for the conference, and um, I was also a student planner. Um, and we both went to the conference last year, so we were able to like pull like, experiences from last year um, and help help us like with the conference this year. So, and what was a standout moment for you at this year's conference? Um, our one of I think my service group or my like city tour group. Um, we went to see the UN like and the Quaker United Nations, but then we also went to the Child Mind Institute, and we sat in on like I guess sort of a focus group about mental illness. And it was really interesting to see the way like the individuals at the Child Mind Institute were using social media to help 
uh, children and teens with mental illness kind of overcome their struggles and I guess get the strength to like continue on. What about you, Val? Um, well, a standout moment for me was, was when I led my workshop because I'd never like facilitated a workshop before, so like it was like the first time I was doing that. So it was like a new experience for me. So I, I enjoyed doing that. It was kind of like I was getting out of my comfort zone because I'm usually like in the in the sidelines. So that was good. So you worked hard. You planned a lot for this conference. Was there anything that surprised you? I mean, I wasn't really surprised that it came together, but like it was like. The way that it came together so like well and like it really like fit well was was really was really good. Yeah, certainly, and also the way that our, our like groups kind of like mesh together. For the like the I could think like the day trip groups, we were all put together with like six or seven students from all different schools and a faculty member. And I mean, it was awkward at first because you don't really like none of us really knew each other. But by the end of the trip, we were all like laughing and talking, and we were getting along really well. Very cool. Had you been to um, youth leadership, Quaker youth leadership conferences in the past? Mm -hmm. So how did this one differ from those conferences? I definitely like saw that there was a difference between like like going to the conference and like planning it because like I know at times like I felt like um, there was a lot to be done so like I couldn't really like be in the, like a specific part of the conference because I was planning something or I was helping out something. This was my third QILC. I went sophomore year at Tandem Friends School and I went last year at Lincoln and Moses Brown. And I think it differs in the sense, like, when you're planning the conference, there's so many, like, things that you have to be aware of and not so much, like, when you're attending. Like, when you're attending, you're more focused on just enjoying your workshops or, like, listening to the speaker. But there's so many, like, little nuts and bolts that you don't think of when you're going that become, like, really, really important and really, like, I guess, fundamental when you're planning the conference. I participated during the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. I was not as much a part of the planning committee. Okay, so what was your role at the conference? Um, more of a student leader, get people from one building to the other, just make sure that they know where they're going and what they're doing and who they're supposed to be doing it with. Okay, and how did that work out? Was I think there, it were went... Any bumps in the road there? Um, I mean, some people got lost. But every once in a while, everything everything worked out fine in the end, and it was a good experience for them, I think. Very cool. How about, um, what was, like, your favorite moment of the conference? My favorite moment was probably going on the subway with the people I had to travel with because they got excited with about the subway, and I thought that was fun to see. And I mean, just about them seeing New York for the first time, because a lot of them, or some of them, were... were it was the first time they'd ever been to the city, and they liked it. They either didn't like it or they liked it, but it was fun to see their reaction. Was this your first time at the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference? This was my first time at the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. Did anything surprise you about the conference? Um, yes. I think that it was that every single person there was genuinely friendly, and no one was mean, and there were no like fights that I could see of, and I thought it was very fitting for a Quaker Youth Leadership Conference, and it was surprising that everyone could be so... Just like amicable when they just met them. So, what kind of service options were there? There, um, well, there were a lot of service options, and there was one about women's reproductive health, and then there's one that I went to called the Child Mind Institute, and that just talks about mental health and stigmas around it, and talking about them and working through them, and it was a really interesting experience. So, you helped out with the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference this year. Mm -hmm. What was your role? Did you plan? Did you um, help facilitate? I did a little bit of planning because I joined like later on, um, so I didn't do as much planning as some of the other planners, but it was a really good experience because I got to meet a lot of new people. Um, and I did facilitate a little bit in terms of like, since it was in our school, like Mar no would ask me to make some of like the announcements, so I would like do announcements every now and then and like get everyone to be quiet when we needed to, and also like because not everyone knew where we were, or like the area, since I actually live here, I was able to like lead everyone back and forth from the buildings or direct them to where they needed to go if they ever got lost, so. Very cool. So was this your first Quaker Youth Leadership Conference? Yeah, this is my first conference, because I don't think last year ninth graders were able to go. What was your favorite moment of the conference? Um, it was like a Quaker meeting and like the first night no one really was talking and I felt like everyone was kind of uncomfortable but this girl who I didn't even know was like talking to me during Quaker meeting which I guess is a bad thing and at first I was trying to like be a good person and like shh but then like we got really close over that weekend and then like the next Quaker meeting like everyone was talking and um, 
they were all sharing like really important things. So overall, like each Quaker meeting that we had was really like eventful and memorable. So I think those were really good experiences. Do you feel like you made like long term friends out of it? Um, I think like it took it takes me a really long time to get really close with people, but there was just two or there was a few people who like we made like a little like friendship group already and like I still talk to them and like we're still like I miss you and stuff like that so I think definitely next year is gonna be super fun because I'll see them again and like well we're gonna keep in touch I feel like hi Sophie hi so I'm interviewing people about the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference mm -hmm. what was your role in the conference um, so I was part of the planning committee I didn't really lead a workshop or anything um, but I've been going to the conference. This is my third year, um, so I've been a participant multiple times. And this year, I decided I wanted to help plan it. And what was like a standout moment this year? Standout moment was the first night when we had our little dance or socializing event or whatever. Um, because there were people who were playing, there were people who were dancing, obviously, and then there were people who were playing board games and doing puzzles and like tie dyeing. I had to, con I had to take control of that. But I mean, everybody was socializing, no matter what they were doing, and it kind of just showed the difference in the people who was there, the difference in what they wanted to do, but how they still could appreciate each other and appreciate what everyone else was doing. How did this conference? Uh, differ from previous years? Personally, I thought it was the best, but, you know, I spent a year planning this one. I mean, the idea of, like, bridging communities, I think it really came out, where I don't feel as the theme came out in other conferences. The trips we gave people the opportunity to go, to go on was extremely interesting. Cool. Okay, so you did a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that surprised you this year? It was kind of what I expected. I mean, in terms of everybody being respectful, in terms of everybody supporting each other. So I'm here with Marna Harity in the studio, and she was the point person for Brooklyn Friends School for the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. Tell us just a little bit about yourself in case some of our listeners don't know who you are. Hi, Andy. Um, I'm a longtime teacher here at Brooklyn Friends and have actually held a variety of roles, taught many different subjects. Currently, I'm teaching math in the middle school and Quakerism in the high school. And I got involved with the Quaker Youth Leadership Conference back in 2012. Brooklyn Friends has uh, hosted the event once before, actually kind of twice before. Is that right? We co-hosted with Friends Seminary, I'm going to say maybe 10 years ago. And we co-hosted with Friends Academy back in 2012, but it was at Friends Academy. Right. So we were almost like the assistant host there. And this year we we co-hosted with Mary McDowell Friends School, but the students all slept here. <laughs> Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. We co-hosted. We had a wonderful planning team from Mary McDowell and from Brooklyn Friends, uh, teams of about 10 students from each school and about four teachers from each school helped with the planning. How many schools were uh, came and how many students and faculty were here? We hosted 21 schools from all up and down the eastern seaboard as far south as the Carolinas. We went as far west as DC. We went up into Canada, Pickering College School from Toronto was here. Mm -hmm. And there were how many students? About 150 students total, and then adding on about another 45 chaperones. So mm -hmm. we almost 200, almost 200 people were at the conference. Can you tell us why this is such an interesting, unique, wonderful conference? I love witnessing it and attending it and watching it and watching the kids. Some kids literally have said this is the most meaningful experience in their school year. It, we have one senior who much of her college applications mentioned her experience with Quaker Youth Leadership Conference. She attended as a sophomore and a junior and then was a key to our planning team this year. The students are expected to plan mm -hmm. and run this event where 
you know, uh, us adults and faculty sort of have to take a back seat. Is that correct? Well, we really try to encourage them to take the lead as much as possible. And, uh, you know, like starting out with picking the theme, it was all student generated. And we were just there to guide that discussion and to ask questions. So it's a wonderful opportunity, unlike many other conferences that our students attend, where they just go and attend. This was a conference where they actually planned it and took leadership during it and just basically ran the show. And, uh, and they are exhilarated by that. It's frightening, I'm sure, in some cases for them, but ultimately they were like amazingly successful as student leaders. I'm going to go out on a limb here, but uh, in Quakerism, there's a, a, a real thing about being mindful mm -hmm. of how you live your life and being mindful of the spirit or that of God and when those things happen. And I always look for that at this conference, and this year I saw a number of instances uh, where that was happening. Did you? Very much. It was magical, and I and I I think our theme that we chose, as well as the the adults we brought in for the panel on Thursday night, and our keynote speaker on Friday, all really spoke to that of God, that of goodness, in people and and in these troubling times in our country our keynote you know ask the children play it out like what are what are you afraid of you know and then what are you hopeful for and really i think it gave a chance for them to think about you know the good in them the good in humanity the god in us the light in us and i really believe that even those who are feeling somewhat sad and depressed were beginning to feel hopeful as the conference progressed Part of the conference, uh, which we were involved in, because I was also on this planning committee, was right at the end of the conference, the, planning, the student planners get together with next year's student planners mm -hmm. and, and compare notes. And uh, one of those magical moments you were talking about happened there for me when I heard a student say, this is the first time I was given responsibility to make decisions for others. And I thought, wow, that really is QYLC in, in a nutshell. So which magical moments stick out for you? <laughs> wow, there were just so many at the conference that I witnessed. Students connecting, sharing, supporting. In We had meeting for worship each day, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and each meeting got more profound. And... In the last meeting, one student shared that this was the most important part of their year. Another student said they made a connection between visiting the Museum of Jewish Heritage, Neonu's keynote speech on Friday, and a workshop they had been in earlier that morning about stereotypes. And just it, it just hit them that 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 they have so much work to do as a person, but they feel positive about it. And they also don't know exactly what to do, but that's not a bad feeling. And another magical moment, which is on the total light side, Quaker light side, was Friday, I mean, excuse me, Thursday night, we had a dance for the kids. They had been together all of maybe five hours, four, five, four or five hours, and they were dancing together in the lobby of the Pearl Street building, I was up in the cafeteria with kids who were playing board games and tie-dyeing their conference t-shirts. And boom, we looked up and there was a conga line that had come up from the cafeteria, up from the lobby into the cafeteria and danced all the way through the cafeteria and then back down to the lobby. And that was just so cool. I mean, I think when kids go to, I went to sleepaway camp as a young child and it would take like two weeks to achieve that level of um, connection, connection, yeah. that level of connection and being together, being totally open with each other. It just, it's magic. This conference is, is magic for the participants. And I feel like it's magic for the faculty who come as well, who, because we're given this opportunity to bond and share our ideals and our thoughts of what it, what it means to work at a friend's school. Magic indeed. Thank you, Marna. Thank you, students. Thank you, Dr. Weiss. And thank you out there for listening to today's show. And remember to let your life speak.